the European Union's flagship crypto legislation passed in 2023, is coming into effect this year, but pre-existing legislation has not been enforced evenly. Uh, this is according to John Helge Eggelsing, chair and founder of Monarium, a licensed e-money issuer operating in the region. According to Eggelsing, the new regulations, the markets and crypto assets regulation are built upon the EU's electronic money directive EMB2, which has been flouted for a million years. Uh, Eggleston expressed dismay uh, at the general state of enforcement uh, and uh, how it impacts e-money firms uh, you know, in the region. Uh, if you issue e-money, you have to be licensed as an e-money institution. Eggleston said, if you don't, then you're subject to fines and jail time. This is a situation as Eagleson reads it. But as he explained, not everyone faces the same level of scrutiny. Um, while that might be enough to concern e-money issuers, in some ways becoming licensed only creates additional problems. Edgelson said, as a licensed entity, you are restricted what you can do, how you can promote it, how you can solicit it. You have to submit reports. And then the regulator comes back and says, you're not doing this. Uh, Bitcoin L2 is set to explode as ruins can just BTC network uh, and therefore becoming a licensed issuer with regulatory oversight uh, involves a lot of overhead and cost. So, uh, but while Monerium operates under close regulatory scrutiny, other forms of money, including stable coins, do not. I think it's remarkable that uh, regulators uh, somehow allow this to happen and have been allowing this for years now, uh, said a clearly unhappy Eggleson. Uh, uh, Crypto Moon spoke with Natalia Lotka, policy director in regulatory affairs at blockchain analysis firm Merkel Science, to understand why this disparity in enforcement has emerged. Lotka explained that in the EU there are two main divergent legal viewpoints surrounding the regulation of electronic money tokens or ENTs or stable coins. The first school of thought focuses on the predominance of the electronic money directive. As Latka says, quote, according to this school, the EMD directly applied to EMTs before MICA was enacted, making MICA regulation that does not introduce completely new rules, but rather reinforces and elaborates upon the existing framework established by the EMD. Latka said that this view finds support in Article 48.2 of MICA, which explicitly states that e-money tokens shall be considered as electronic money, confirming the application of the EMD to EMTs. And it's never no notable. I like to find out consistently in many cases. I like to find out a challenging the type of uh, the second school of thought believes MICA is the primary legislation for stable coins or EMTs. Uh, uh, supporters of this school emphasize the significant differences between EMTs and traditional electronic money, said Latka. As regulators see it, uh, stable coins create additional risk factors that are not present in e-money. Self-custodial wallets create one such systematic risk factor. Another risk factor emerges from global stable coins that could become systemic. The European Commission considered the EMD's provisions unsuitable for tackling the inherent risks of such a scenario. Laka said, it's important to note that while the Commission could have regulated e-money tokens under the EMD, this option was discussed but ultimately not pursued. Instead, the decision was made to create a bespoke regulatory framework that coexists with the EMD to address all regulatory gaps effectively. Uh, the issue for industry insiders such as Edgerson is that while this new regulatory framework was discussed, debated, approved, and enacted, there has not been parity of enforcement. Given issues Eggleson raised, CryptoMoon asked if MICA would make a difference. And I sincerely believe they will enforce it, Eggleson said. And uh, with MICA coming fully into force later in 2024 and concerned parties such as Edgelson, uh, optimistic about its effect, uh, it might appear that the legal debate on stable practice, uh, e-money, is over. 
uh, recent where to store your crypto. Wallets provide diverse options for holders. However, Mica only represents the next step in an ongoing discussion. Far more detail needs to be worked out, which could take years. Uh, there's not a definitive answer to this debate, and it is essential that the EU authorities provide clear guidance, said Lavka. The industry needs additional clarifications, especially regarding how MICA interacts with existing EU financial regulations and directives. The interplay of MICA with other financial laws requires a well-defined demarcation and a strategy for resolving any conflicting or overlapping regulations.